grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to St. David's morning worship on the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Please join with us in the prayers as you are able that we might worship together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collect Prayer for this Sunday. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. May we find peace in your service and in the world to come see you face to face through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our readings for this day are 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 to 5 and 12 to 19, Psalm 24, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14, and Mark chapter 6, verses 14 to 29. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers, and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in prison, brought his head on a platter, and gave it to the girl. When the girl, then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the Gospel of Christ. A 
I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mark's account has all the marks of a good story. There's an anecdotal style, vivid and dramatic details, an adulterous king, a scheming woman, a dancing girl, and a violent death. He's hardly the sort of story, though, we would expect to find in the midst of Holy Scripture. Herod Antipas is the son of Herod the Great, the one who ruled when Jesus was born. Antipas found John to be intriguing, but Herodias, as Antipas' second wife, hated him. Herodias was the wife of Antipas' brother, as well as the daughter of another brother, making her his niece. Thus, according to Jewish law, the marriage was illegal. The birthday banquet Herod throws, to me at least, has the feel of a Jeffrey Epstein party. The beautiful girl dances before the boozed-up men and delights them. Herod rashly promises the girl anything she wants, and her scheming mother seizes the opportunity to silence John, ask for the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Herod was deeply grieved at this request, but because of his oaths before his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Believing that John was a righteous and holy man, why then did Herod lack the moral courage to do the right thing? The answer lies in part in the dynamics of an honor-shame society in which social capital is much more important than financial capital. Avoiding disgrace, and maintaining harmonious relationships is fundamental to thriving in such a society. Well, we might praise a person for going against popular opinion and doing what they think is right. That would not happen in an honor-shame culture. For an individual's behavior either honors or dishonors the whole clan, the whole group. Herod is ambitious, so he needs to do what brings honor, not only to himself, but to his cronies. So he must, in the honor-shame dynamic, fulfill his oath to the girl, even though in his heart he knows it's wrong. The honor-shame dynamic plays out in our Old Testament reading uh, for today as well. When the Ark of God that symbol of God's presence and promise is brought into Jerusalem, King David dances before the Lord with all his might, with abandon, wearing a priestly garment. David honors God, or so he believes, in so doing. But when his wife, Michal, sees him leaping and dancing, she despises him. She calls his dancing vulgar, accusing him of shamelessly uncovering himself before others. She claims he did not honor God, but rather honored himself and brought shame to the family. Mark, in his biography of Jesus, sandwiches the story of Herod's birthday bash in between Jesus sending out of the disciples and their return. Jesus commissioned them to tell others of God's presence and promises and gave them the power to cure disease. When they return, they tell of all they have done and taught. And in between, is this stark illustration of the costliness of choosing to honor God over family. John's death foreshadows Jesus' death, for Jesus too will make honoring God his priority 
and die a death that brings shame to family and associates. As followers of Jesus, we too must be concerned with honoring God. And we honor God not by serving the interests of our families and social networks, but by serving the least, the lost, the lonely, and the loveless. Jesus calls us to risk ridicule and shame for the sake of bearing good news of God's presence, his promises, and his love to those in need. Following Jesus is costly. Yet our eternal inheritance is so much more valuable than maintaining our honour or that of our tribe. Paul writes that God chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless in God's presence before the creation of the world. Furthermore, God destined us to be his adopted children through Jesus Christ because of his love. God, in fact, honours us by making us his children. In a sense, making us royalty, sons and daughters of a king. And not because we do anything to merit that honour, but simply because God loves us so very much. An adopted child was overheard saying, your parents had to have you, but my parents chose me. How wonderful it is to be chosen purely out of love. As beloved children, God bestows on us good and precious gifts. God redeems us, making us debt free. God forgives our futile thinking and actions. Moreover, God chooses to let us in on his plan to bring healing and restoration to our world. And God gives us an inheritance. He's created life-giving spirit who accompanies us now in this life and even after our death. God chooses us to live for the praise of his glory. Or, as the message paraphrase puts it, it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, God had his eye on us. God had designs for us for glorious living, for being a part of God's overall purpose that God is working out in everything and everyone. What a wonderful calling we have to honour God with our lives by being part of God's plan to restore and bring healing to this world. So thanks be to God for all his many blessings bestowed on us, surely out of love. May we live for his honour and glory today and every day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for all who confess the name of Christ. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. We remember in our prayers this week, Bishop-elect Stephen, Dean Alex, Diocese of Edmund Archdeacons, Lee Bezanson, Travis Enright, Jordan Haney Ware, and Richard King. And we remember also our twin, the parish of Mubanga in Bouye Diocese. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for those whose lives are bound in mutual love and for those who live in celibacy. 
for those who ache for human touch. Be their joy and strength. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all in danger, for those who are far from home, for prisoners, exiles, victims of injustice and oppression here and abroad, grant them your salvation. And in our prayers this week, we remember members of the Louis Bull tribe. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who are facing trials and difficulties, for those who are sick and those who are dying, show them your kindness and mercy. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray for one another and for this parish of St. David's. May we always be united in service and love. Lord, hear and have mercy. We pray to be forgiven our sins as we seek to forgive others and be set free from all hardship, distress, want, war, and injustice. Lord, hear and have mercy. May we discover new and just ways of sharing the goods of the earth, struggling against exploitation, greed, or lack of concern. May we all live by the abundance of your mercies and find joy together. Lord, hear and have mercy. These things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May God give to you and to all those you love his comfort and peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.